<laughs> maybe uh, since the first time in here, if you just identify yourselves as you're asking coach questions, that'd be great. So. Sean Callahan with Husker Online. I'm curious, what was your familiarity growing up in Iowa with Nebraska football? And, and how, closely did, uh, how much did you know about Nebraska before you came here? Quite a bit. <laughs> I grew up 30 minutes south of uh, Iowa City, you know, so grew up a fan of theirs and, you know, uh, you know, just obviously being in this part of the country, I, I knew what Nebraska football was all about and, um, you know, uh, just you know, didn't have any ties to it, but, uh, you know, I guess probably the closest thing I could say I did was we took a lot of trips to Colorado, and so we would drive right through here. Um, but uh, just all, you know, a great deal of respect for the program, the the, the history, uh, the tradition, uh, and it's exciting to be a part of it. Just a uh, Steve Sipple from Husker Online. Uh, just what basic question why why did you want to take this job at this time I was bored <laughs> uh, great deal of respect for uh, coach rule um, you know we we visited in December uh, you know and I didn't think it was fair to him me or the the program to do it at that point you know I was just I was tired I'd been through a lot and um, you know, just didn't have to do it at that point, and I didn't feel like I was ready to give it my all. Um, you know, I was very grateful to Sonny Dykes and TCU for being a, a consultant there, uh, which kept me around the game. You know, I was there for, like, I think three weeks in camp, um, and then went on vacation for about two weeks. Uh, came back, and I was always there. Like, I was there for, for two weeks, and I was, a part, I was there for two games, and I didn't like being a part of the games because I wasn't a part of the games, all right? I was up in the head coach's suite for a game and I was on the sidelines for a game. And I'm like, yeah, this just, I don't, this, I don't like this part of it. If I'm not gonna, if I don't have any control over it, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do it. So I would just help prep them in the beginning of the week and then I'd go do something else. Uh, it was fun to kind of go do other things, but um, you know, I was slated to go back to, to Fort Worth on Sunday night and coach rule called and I was like, yeah, I mean, he said, you know, let's just come try to figure this out. You know, I need your help. And so I was I was grateful to him for saying that I needed your help, you know. And so I was like, you know, I think a great deal of him. Um, you know, I think a great deal of this program. So I was I was excited to jump on it, you know. Uh, you know rules allow it now. You know, in years past, rules wouldn't have allowed it. So, um, you know, I just wanted to insert myself and – and try to help Coach Rule and try to help this football team and try to help this 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 great program. Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Fellow. Welcome to Nebraska, Dana. Um, Thank you. Curious about, okay, so you've been here about a week and a half, two weeks. What do you think of this group, of this of this offense? Uh, how do you feel like it can get fixed? Because Rule has used that word, fixed. And, and how quickly do you think that can happen? I had no idea what to expect on Saturday. Um, I mean, I dove right in and, you know, a week later, you know, he, he made the announcement. I didn't know what was going to happen in the beginning. I, you know, I, I, did, I didn't come here with the intention of being the offensive coordinator and the play caller. Uh, we didn't know what it was going to look like. He's just like, hurry up and get here, you know. And so I got here and just started digging into it. And uh, it, it's, 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 I, I just, I think, you know, my job is to wake up and try to make it better every single day. I mean, that's, it's, you know, I've literally worked 16 hour days for every day for, it's been 13, 14 days now or whatever it is, you know, so uh, I'm still learning. I'm still learning the offense. I'm still learning different nuances. I'm still learning the players. I don't know all the players yet. And so I'm still trying to get to know those guys. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's about putting your head down and just trying to prepare, you know. And so for, you know, the first eight or nine days, I focused on us and, you know, tried to learn an offense, uh, you know, tried to, I watched all the video to try to figure out what we do well and what we don't do well. And, you know, watched three or four practices to try to assess what we do well and what we don't do well. Um, and then I turned attention to USC and I had to figure that out defensively. Um, and then Sunday I had to turn our attention to, to Wisconsin, you know, so there's only so many, there's only so many hours in the day. We just got done with a practice out there, two and a half hour practice. And, I'm about to go get into a room and study the video for the next, you know, couple hours, and then 
then turn the attention back to Wisconsin and start watching third third down and medium and third down and long and red zone and score zone and goal line. Um, leave here late at night, wake up and do it all over again. So there's just there's a lot of information, a lot of assessing, a lot of um, you know. But at the end of the day, it's about trying to get these guys in position to be successful. You know, uh, you know, just whatever we can do to practice to make people better to uh, to give them the information. Um, uh, to, to try to get these guys to be in position to be able to be successful this Saturday. I ain't thinking about anything else other than that. I ain't thinking about where we need to go offensively. I'm not thinking about, you know, the University of Iowa the next week. Uh, you know, it's – I don't know what December is going to look like. I don't know what January is going to look like. I don't care. 100% of my focus is, is trying to get our offense uh, better to where we can win against Wisconsin on Saturday. Yeah, um, uh, Mitch Sherman from The Athletic. Um, and you, you said when you came, you didn't know what you, if you would end up as the OC and play caller. How long did that process take you during the bye week, and what what was that decision like or conversation like, conversations like from your perspective? Yeah, Mitch is. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I got here and I got into a room and started watching video, you know, and then coach sat in there with me for a couple hours and. A couple of the offense coaches started coming in. They didn't know what was going on, you know, and we didn't know either. We're just like, we just need to try to figure this out. And I just, I think everybody was professional about it. Um, I think we got really good coaches here. You know, all the offensive coaches um, are, are coaching hard. i um, been very impressed with how they're coaching each one of their positions, you know, including Coach Satterfield coaching the tight ends and giving me information on, you know, w what this term means, what that term means, and, and, um, you know, I, I don't I don't remember the timeline as far as when we made that decision. I know, you know, at first I was like, I don't, you know, I don't know if I can learn it to call it. You know, who else can call it? I don't know if I should. Be. Then I decided, okay, I, I got to I got it. This probably three or four days later, I go, I go, okay, I got a handle on it. I think I can do it. He's like, do it. And then a week later, I'm like, geez, I don't know if I should be in the box to call it or on the sidelines to call it. And I think Friday we made the decision. I think, Susan, I told you on Friday that I'm going to go ahead and go down there. That's just where I'm comfortable. I haven't been up in the box since 2007, you know, and so I made that decision to do that. And so um, I don't know the timeline. It was just every day was just something different, you know, and learned more every day, got to know people more every day. The offensive staff continued to work together, and I think we're working together really good right now. Hey, Dana, Brian Christofferson from Husker 24-7. What's been your early impression of, of Dylan, and how did you feel like the game day operation went with him? I thought everything was really good. You know, I have I started talking into the mic on Tuesday morning of game week. That's the first time I talked into that thing, you know, and it makes play calling a lot easier. You know, the iPads on the sidelines make make play calling easier. You know, and I'd talk to a couple of my uh, just colleagues across the country, and they're all like, they called and they say, "So you're gonna call it?" And I said, "Yeah." And they, they're like, "Well, the 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 technology is gonna help you. It's gonna, you know, so you know, I can just look at the paper and I can read from it and talk into it. You know, I used to I used to signal everything myself. You know, and now we got a bunch of signalers, but I don't even pay attention to the signalers because I'm just talking to him the whole time, you know. And and he he's he's a very 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 bright young man. Uh, it's just how is this kid a freshman? Because he how how can he process all this information as a freshman? Um, you know he knows what he knows he knows the plays he knows the offense he knows how to communicate it to the players. I thought I thought the process was really good. You know we had two snap infractions which. You know, is 100% on the center. He will admit that, okay. But other than that, there was there is nothing pre-snap. You know, we weren't we weren't getting delay of games. We weren't scrambling to get people lined up. I mean, I thought it was very efficient. I thought our substitutions on the sidelines were really good. Um, you know, so that was encouraging, and I think that will all. I think it all get better. You know, I mean, the play on the field needs to get better. Uh, the operation I thought was fine. So we're not sitting here trying to worry about the operation. We're trying to worry about the play on the field to get better, you know, and that's what we're working on today, just what it looks like out there on the field. Coach Chief Parteki, uh, NCN TV. I'm curious what your thoughts are on the run game and if you're seeing potential there to kind of open that up a little bit more. 
I thought I thought we ran black well uh, on Saturday. Um, you know, I, they say it's the O line's best game up front. You know, I thought we were I thought we played well up front. You know, I I I, I can't gauge it on what happened in the first nine games, but uh, I was I was I was pleasantly surprised with our pad level, our toughness. Um, you know, uh, assignment wise, being being good. I thought we had you know a couple of runs that were good, tough runs that got good, tough yards. But you know, I know Coach Rule mentioned it yesterday. There was there's a lot of yards left out there. You know, when I can push the back and there's a hole like this, you know, and the back's not in it, it's just it's discouraging. You know, and so uh, just got you know uh, got to get those guys to. Open their eyes and trust the blocks and and hit it. I, you know, I, I thought at halftime I was I, I told the running back coach, you know, I was like, they need to hit that thing better because there are some holes there. You know, I mean, it is what it is. You know, you get it up to the second level. We need to get some backs that can make some guys miss in, in open field. I mean, some of those tackles that USC had uh, are hard tackles, and they made them. You know, so. Um, you know, I was I was I was pleased with the scheme. I was pleased with with you know what it looked like. We have to get more production. You know, we we do have to get more production. Dana, did you um did you know enough from watching film and watching practice to have some input on personnel in the game? Like incorporate this player at receiver or this player at tight end more than what what you had seen um, from from Nebraska this season? Yeah, I give my opinion. Um, you know, I, I give my opinion, I, and you know, I, I, you know, Coach Rule has has mentioned this that you know, fresh set of eyes on things are good, I, and I, I I totally 100% believe that. You know, you know, position coaches get they get blinded by what they see sometimes based on a whole bunch of different things. You know, and sometimes players, you know, they. You know they come in and they get uh, they, uh, the, it's you know fresh set of eyes on it and some some opinions are different than others opinions you know I mean they just that's what position coaches they fall in love with specific people and they don't want to give other people chances that's every position coach across the country falls into that trap I did too as as an assistant you know and so I'm constantly looking at it and I've I've voiced my opinion we I, I found one today. Uh, not going to mention it until we go talk about it as a staff, but I found a young kid today that I think can help us play on Saturday. You know, that just keep your eyes open for that. But, um, you know, if it, 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 at the end of the day, it's about it's about competition. If there's competition, then people play better. If there's not competition, then people relax. And, you know, I think our job as coaches, especially in this situation right now, is for, you know, I, I'll say, look, this is what I see. You know, uh, if you don't like it, then do something about it in practice, you know. Uh, Dana Seamark with Inside Nebraska. Uh, what were your initial reactions of Nebraska's receiving core and the personnel with the pass catchers? Uh, I thought they blocked well. Um, they, you know, I, and I, that's the first thing I challenged them. I was like, guys, I said, you guys are fairly big kids. You know, I know 17's not a big kid, but he's a tough kid. But there's some, there's some good sized kids out there, you know. I mean, 16, 18. Four. I mean, these guys. You know, twenty nine. These guys are big bodies. I'm like, why? Why are you not blocking worth the crap on the perimeter? I mean, it's embarrassing. I mean, they, you got being a receiver. You say, oh, they want touches. Throw me the ball. Throw me the ball. First thing I said to them, if you don't start blocking out there, then you're not going to get the ball thrown to you. And this past week, it was our best perimeter blocking of the season. I was very happy with those guys, and they're proud of it. You know, because they worked hard on it for two weeks. Uh, that's where it starts, you know, and then, you know, and then just details of route running and, and, and ball skills. we got guys that can make plays. Uh, the problem that we probably ran into last week is not defeating man coverage. Um, USC is very talented in their secondary. Wisconsin's very talented in their secondary. Both are going to play a lot of man. We didn't do a very good job of, of, of separation last week. Uh, we need to do a better job of that, that that this week for us to be successful against Wisconsin. Coach Kevin Suits with Channel 10 here in Lincoln. Uh, do you feel any pressure to help this team get a sixth win and get the program to a bowl game for the first time in eight years? Yeah, I feel. I mean, every every yeah, every, there is pressure in coaching. I mean, anytime that you line up and you coach a game, there's pressure. You know, so 
um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. It's not going to, it's not going to change what I do. It's not going to change how I coach. It's not going to change the hours that we put in. It's not going to change my commitment to, to, uh, getting us ready to go practice tomorrow morning and, you know, Thursday morning and, and what we try to accomplish on that's, I don't, I mean, pressure is something that I'm <laughs> obviously used to. I mean, I've been a head coach for 14 years and, you know, coaching for 32 years, you line up because of the competitive spirit that you have in you. If you give in to pressure, then you need to go do something else. And I would have, I would have had an opportunity to go do something else. And I'm sitting here trying to, to help Nebraska win. I know, I know it's, it's on everybody's mind. I know I get it. It's shocking to me that it's been that long since the, the, a program like this hasn't been to a bowl game. Doesn't make any sense to me, but uh, it is where we're at. And we tried everything we could to win that game last week, and we had a chance still. And we're going to try everything that we can to win this game this week, and we'll have a chance still. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Good to see everybody.